Hello and welcome to the Cloth Diaper Review. My name is Carmen. Welcome back if you've watched one of my videos before and welcome if this is the first time that you're ever seeing one of my videos. I'm super glad that you're here. I'm looking forward to getting to know a little bit more about you. So today is day four of National Diaper Need Awareness Week and with that it's also day four of the Cloth Collective Initiative for 2022. Today the prompt is why? Why do you cloth diaper? Why are you interested in cloth diapering? Why did you start cloth diapering and quit? And back and forth. There's a lot of ways that you could go with this prompt. Before we get into why I specifically cloth diaper, I want to remind you all that one in three families within the United States, I'm not speaking globally, I'm speaking like within your community, one in three families is experiencing desperate diaper need. So that means, for example, if there are 10 children born at your local hospital in one day, at least three of those families are going home without the ability to properly cloth diaper their child. So what that is leading to is families utilizing unsafe items to take care of hygiene with their children, or children are being left because there's no other option in a soiled diaper for far too long and that can have some very serious um, health implications. So with that, I want to remind you that in the drop box down there, if you click on my linked tree link that will be there, I have information and this is year round, it's always going to be there for you. Information to if you would like to go the cloth route and you cannot financially afford to make that investment to start, you can go ahead to the cloth option. It's very easy to get signed up and they will help you get the materials that you need to start cloth diapering. If you would prefer to go the disposable route or you would like to do a hybrid of both cloth is not all or nothing, you can go ahead and click the link that will be for the national diaper banks. And I encourage you, if this is something that you are really needing, there may also be more resources available in your local community that could help you in additional ways. If you live in the state of North Dakota, that's where I live. Also in that link, there are going to be additional um, resources available, such as if you are having issues making sure that there is enough food on your table for your family, there's links for that. There's also links for if you uh, need access to free healthcare, specifically in uh, pregnancy, there are links with clinics all around the state of North Dakota that can help you in addition to the foster care system. So if you have room in your heart for one more and you would like to open your home, all the links for uh, foster care will also be there. It's something that is needed now more than ever. So why did I start cloth diapering? I don't really recall specifically why I decided that this is where I wanted to take our family, but I would imagine that I googled ways to save money with children, like that's kind of what it comes down to. We do live a very comfortable life at the time when I was expecting we were a two income home and we had never planned to be a single income home. I think that it was something that felt really unobtainable to us. And it wasn't until my son was about six weeks old that I had really started to express desire to stay home for a variety of reasons. And when we were able to take a good hard look at our finances and take a look at what I was making versus how much daycare is where we are. So a newborn daycare at a center here is between $900 and $1,000 per month. And it does not go down until your child is over two years old usually. Usually when they're potty trained, the daycare will go down. And when we really looked at what I would be bringing into the home, basically was paying to have our child go to daycare with oh, not enough left over to really make or break our finances in a month. And that's why we ultimately decided it was a better idea for me to stay home than to send our child to daycare. With that, I will note, though, that I do, I clean houses on the side. I clean a couple houses a week, and it brings in enough to have, like, my own kind of personal money. Um, this is the first time that I haven't had 
my own money and not be actively making money. So that's been a really odd adjustment for me. And I don't want you to think that like my husband won't give me money or I don't have access to it. It's absolutely nothing like that. He would never, ever, ever say something like that or withhold finances in any way, shape or form. So I want to be very, very clear about that. This is a completely personal thing about wanting to still feel quite self-sufficient and kind of not feel guilty if I want to purchase something for myself or purchase something that we don't necessarily need for our home, but I would like for our home. So that is one thing. It was saving money. And now more than ever, because we are single income family home and we're also a military family home. And if you don't know, now you know military families really don't make all that much money. Basically, military families make money um, after a certain rank. Money gets a little bit better or when someone's deployed. And then somebody's left at home. There's there's a lot that goes into that. So we definitely don't live a luxurious life by any means, but we have what we need and then some. That does also allow us to give back to um, like organizations that we want to be able to support and things like that. So big thing was money. And then with that, I became, when I was pregnant, a lot more concerned with what was in our stuff. Primarily like toxic chemicals that we know aren't good for us but are still allowed to be in products and an alarming percentage. I think it's like between 85 and 90 percent of children's products have formaldehyde in there. So I became a lot more aware of things that were in our everyday products and one of those can be disposable diapers. Now I'm not saying this to shame anybody who uses disposable diapers because not everybody has the choice to be able to use disposable or to do cloth for a large amount of reasons. So I don't want it to be taken as that but for myself I was quite concerned about what is in disposable diapers. Does my son sometimes wear disposable diapers? Yes. When he is at grandma and grandpa's house, he is in disposable diapers and it's not because they don't want to cloth diaper him. It's that primarily my dad takes care of my son and um, I just want to make it a little bit easier. So I don't want to say that cloth diapering is tricky or difficult. The one thing is that we have a lot of different brands so all of them kind of fit a little bit differently. So just to make things a little bit easier, is my son in disposable diapers sometimes? Yes, but he's not in them. 24 7 which makes me feel better about his um, exposure to potentially harmful material that is in disposable diapers and in um, you know body products and things like that like in the bathtub or in his food and things like that and then the other thing that I actually didn't become aware of until after we had been getting cloth diapering I kind of didn't think about it was how long a disposable diaper takes to break down in a landfill. So what is said, they say, is 500 years. Well, it hasn't been 500 years since a disposable was invented. So are we sure? Is it less? Is it more? That's kind of no matter to me. The fact that there's so much plastic and we know that it doesn't break down very quickly, if at completely all, does really bother me. So if you think about 500 years in terms of like your family history, that's five or six generations of people that would just have diapers in the landfill. So if you're the somebody's fifth or sixth great grandparent in 500 years, your diapers are still in the landfill. And I know that many things that we do to try to save the environment on like a personal or like family level, we know aren't going to make that big of a deal. It really comes down to big corporations. And I don't want to get like conspiracy theory on you, but that is, that is the truth. Um, with our emissions and the things that we are putting into landfills, what we personally do cannot have as great of an impact as what big corporations could be doing to limit the amount of waste that we are putting into our world. And this is, as far as we know, the only place that we can go. So if we don't take care of it the best that we could, and that does start with you and me, we will eventually have no place to go. And even if we don't see 
the effects in our lifetime, I can't help but think for my fifth and sixth grade grandchildren, what kind of life we are leaving behind for them. So that's kind of the short of it. I could go into a lot more detail and this should hopefully be a little bit shorter video than the ones that I normally put out. However, the main reason why I wanted to start cloth diapering was because I wanted to save money and it is a choice that I feel very grateful to have had the privilege to be able to make. So with that, I want to remind you again of the resources that will be in my comment box down there. That link, that hyperlink that will bring you to the other resources, that is something that is on my Instagram and will be year round. And I'll be adding additional resources as they become available and known to me. So with that, thank you so much for watching on day four of the Cloth Collective Initiative during National Diaper Need Awareness Week. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and I hope that I'll see you tomorrow with day five.